And what do you think is some of the clear um, differentiations between good sellers and great sellers? If I had to put it down to one thing, it would definitely be follow-up and having the tenacity to stay in the deals when they're uncomfortable and just keep following up like forever. So that's the major thing that, you know, most people they'll get like four or five no's and they'll pack up shop, they'll bounce off the sales call, they'll never call the prospect again. Or if it's high ticket, it's longer, longer sales cycles, they'll follow up for, you know, two or three times the person will say, hey, I still need to think about it. I'll get back to you when I'm ready. And they'll just pack up their bags and they'll stop following up on that prospect that was as hot as a stovetop before. And over the, the matter of a couple of days, it's cooled down. And they don't think that there's any strange reason why they've cooled down. And they believe what that prospect is telling them. So it's really just grit, tenacity, willing to stay in it and do all the things that unsuccessful people aren't willing to do. Mm. And do you think there is a key to following up and there's an art towards it where you have the balance between being extremely annoying and just shut up or uh, the actual pacing and the actual words that you use in order to follow up? What have you found that has been extremely effective in the follow up? Yeah, most people are, they're like whining two year olds when they follow up people. They're just like, Hey, have you looked at the proposal? Hey, are you, are you ready to buy? Hey, 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 hey. Like, it's all about me, right? I've got a thing called value added follow up. And that is to f add value throughout the follow up and throughout that sales cycle. And you better have something that is of value to that prospect every time you follow them up. Otherwise, you're going to stop following up and that person's going to start ghosting you and they're going to start screening your calls and not replying to your emails, and they are gonna completely disappear because you are an annoying, unwelcome pest in their life. People are ducking phone calls from their family members and their friends, let alone a needy salesperson. So you need to make sure that you're positioning what it is that you're following up about is very important to that prospect to solve the problem that they initially reached out to you to solve. And every interaction with you must provide value and move that prospect closer to a buying decision. So how would you then take the next step in order to add value first um, and then follow up? Yeah, well, it's not about adding value first and then following up. It's about adding value as you follow up. As you follow up. Yeah. So like if you've sent out a proposal for somebody to run Facebook ads with you, for instance, and you've sent them out and you said, hey, like the, the retainer's two grand, we're going to charge you this and then that, and there's a setup cost. And then I'm just calling you and I'm like, hey, like, yo, Christopher, like, do you want to sign up? Like, have you, have you made a decision yet? How did you go with the proposal that I sent you last week? Yeah, look, I still haven't had a chat with my business partner. Give me a call back in a month. A month? Yeah, call me back in a month, right? And so all you're doing is calling that person for your own outcome. It's because you want to sign them up as a client and you want to get the money or you want to make the commission. Mm -hmm. You're showing up to sell, not to serve. Whereas you show up to serve, it's like, Hey, Chris, I'm just following up on the, on the proposal that I sent you out last week. Since we last spoke, I've gone into your Facebook ads library and had a look at all the ads that you're running there um, and had a look at the funnel that you're sending them through. And I've already identified some incredible opportunities where I think based on what I'm seeing, I could halve the amount that you're paying to get a lead right now for the same amount of money that you're spending. I also took a look at the two biggest competitors that you mentioned, and I have dissected their entire funnels and their ads, their opt-in pages, and everything that they're doing. And I've got some amazing stuff that I can really apply to your ad account. Mm. Have you seen enough to make a decision yet, Chris? Because I'm eager to get in here and help you solve this problem. Because right now I estimate you're probably wasting somewhere in the vicinity of 40 to 50% on ad spend right now. Mm. Can we get this done for you? Right, I'm, I'm showing there to serve, I'm adding value. I'm not just bugging you and asking you just to buy so I can make a commission.
Hey guys, if you're enjoying these videos, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button as we're dropping a video like this every other day on YouTube. And if you've got any questions, just leave a comment below with hashtag HeySubri and I will do my best to get to it.